If you've been considering already purchase an infrared sauna, you're probably aware of the many benefits such as glowing skin, reducing inflammation, and my favorite one, getting a workout without a workout. But you're probably wondering, can sauna actually help with all of these things or is it just clever marketing? So in this video, I'm gonna go through each of the touted health benefits, share which ones are actually backed by evidence and which ones are hype. Hey there, I'm David and I help people reclaim their lives from brain fog, chronic fatigue, and low self-esteem. So having experienced the benefits of sauna for myself for many years and also helping guide clients integrate it into their wellness protocols, it was really important for me to deeply understand what results we can reasonably expect from using infrared sauna and which ones we can't. I wanna say upfront that I'm a huge fan of sauna as a healing modality. I've done reviews on the higher dose sauna blanket. You can see my most recent one over here. So there won't be any debunking in this video. Rather I really want to empower you to use sauna as a healing modality in the long term. Not just make this some goopy wellness trend, but rather something that you can integrate into your life in a very informed and intentional way. I don't think I've ever said the word goopy before. While this isn't a video on the benefits of sauna, I want to quickly go over a few just to lay the foundation of what we're going to be covering today. So the first one is that people that use sauna two to three times a week are 22% less likely to suffer cardiac arrest. Next one is that sauna mimics physiologically um, moderate aerobic exercise. So a lot of the benefits that you get from moderate aerobic exercise, you also get from sauna usage. Even though there are some caveats and differentiations, this doesn't mean that you shouldn't do moderate aerobic exercise or that this is a replacement for movement. However, there are some parallels. Next, and this is a big one, so pay attention, is that the people that use sauna four to six times a week were 40 to 60 percent less likely to die from the top causes of death so all cause mortality was reduced by 40 to 60 percent so imagine if there was a pill if pharmaceutical companies came out with a pill that reduced the likelihood that you would die from the top causes of mortality top causes of death by 40 to 60 percent imagine how much that would cost Hey there, if you're getting value from this video, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. All right, back to the episode. All right, so the first claim that you see touted often is improved exercise recovery. And yes, this is actually backed by evidence. So you often see biohackers, thought leaders, and functional medicine practitioners uh, recommending sauna usage after a workout in order to reduce the inflammation that's produced during the workout. And this is something that I do myself, even if it's just for 20 minutes, because it does get me into the parasympathetic nervous system. It is deeply grounding, especially if you've done something like HIT or weight training that is a bit more taxing on the nervous system. This is a great way to kind of balance you out and make sure that you're set up for the rest of your day. So in this study that I'm showing here um, that was done in competitive runners, relative to the control, sauna bathing increased run time to exhaustion by 32%, which is equivalent to an enhancement of approximately 1.9%. So in addition to what was shown in the study, there are other studies showing that decreases C-reactive protein, which is a marker of inflammation. It also increases interleukin-10 and interleukin-6, which are usually increased during moderate aerobic exercise. So these are myokines, so they have an anti-inflammatory property as well. So the next benefit is supporting heavy metal detoxification or detoxification in general. And yes, this one is also supported by evidence. This one in particular hits very close to home for me because elevated heavy metals, specifically cadmium, arsenic, and mercury, were one of the root causes for my brain fog and chronic fatigue. I actually wasn't using a lot of sauna at that time because I wasn't aware that this was a useful modality. Even though I was working with a functional medicine practitioner, they didn't really tell me to do this, and I think that actually harmed my progress in the long term. There are certain heavy metals that are best excreted through sweat, and that includes cadmium, aluminum, and mercury. So if you are, if you suspect that you have those elevated, this could be a really helpful modality for you. So here in the study, it was a little bit limited due to the difficulty in recruiting participants that have the, had the same level of heavy, toxic heavy metals in their body. However, what it did point to is that this is a really helpful modality in terms of assisting heavy metal detoxification. Many ancient detoxification protocols, such as in Ayurveda, they also support this as well, where sauna is used, relied upon quite a bit. So the next claim is glowing skin. So if you were to go on sauna company's website, such as Higher Dose, they have the word glowing skin. They even show models with kind of this, just came out of a facial sort of vibe. 
And I haven't found any studies to support that this actually improves your skin or is useful in the treatment of acne, rosacea, or just blemishes in general. Um, that being said, anecdotally, I have found that when you are supporting your drainage and detoxification, such as regular sauna usage, you are less likely to have kind of puffiness, redness, and these minor blemishes that come out from time to time. And because of the other benefits that we've mentioned, such as reducing inflammation, improved drainage, improved detoxification, improved circulation, well, um, you're inevitably gonna have slightly better skin, but is this 100% supported by evidence? Not really, so I wouldn't try and use sauna in order to heal any uh, skin conditions necessarily. So the next benefit is improved mood and focus. And yes, this one is also backed by evidence. Higher dose in particular emphasizes the ability to get high naturally through the use of sauna. It's even inscribed on their actual sauna blankets and it's sprinkled throughout their marketing. While you can't actually quantify getting high per se, um, there are a lot of pointers that do indicate that sauna can in fact enhance your mood and your focus. So let's look at the studies. So this study showed that sauna should be considered as complementary care for depression patients. So in other words, the patient's self-reported levels of depression went down after using sauna. This other study has demonstrated that sauna increases BDNF or brain-derived neurotropic factor, which plays an important role against brain aging and supporting neuroplasticity or your ability to adapt to new environments. In terms of mood enhancements, we know that sauna mimics moderate aerobic exercise, so it does produce endorphins because you have a heat stressor, but then it also produces something called dynorphin, and dynorphin is produced in order to cool down your internal body temperature. So because you're exposed to heat stress, you release heat shock proteins, and then those heat shock proteins are increasing, are in, creating the dynorphin used in order to cool down the body. So um, it's a, if you want like kind of a deep dive into that mechanism, I recommend Andrew Huberman's podcast on sauna, dives deep into that, as well as Rhonda Patrick's um, podcast as well. I'm, I'm actually gonna link to both of those down below so you can check that as out. Um, but the basic idea is that you have endorphins from the stressor, but then you also have this addition of dynorphins which don't happen under the circumstances of moderate aerobic activity. So the next benefit is reduction in Alzheimer's and dementia. And this is a really important one, one that is not mentioned on most of the sauna company's websites, but it's a really important benefit to keep in mind. So in addition to improving mood and focus, the increased blood flow to the brain has neuroprotective qualities which have been extensively studied in Alzheimer's and dementia patients. So here's what the study said. In this male population, moderate to high frequency sauna bathing was associated with lower risks of dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Further studies are warranted to establish the potential mechanisms linking sauna, sauna bathing, and memory diseases. So in addition to this study, there have been other studies that have pointed to similar conclusions. So one study said that sauna when used four to six times a week reduced the likelihood of getting Alzheimer's and dementia by 40 to 60%, which isn't trivial at all. Another study mentioned that because of the cardiovascular benefits and the fact that sauna usage mimics moderate aerobic exercise, that this increased blood flow to the brain, which then had neuroprotective qualities like I mentioned earlier. And then the last study is around heat shock proteins. So the heat shock proteins are produced from the heat stress. So you, when you are in a hot environment, then you have these heat shock proteins that are produced. These heat shock proteins help to maintain the 3D structure of the proteins inside of your cells. The reason that this is important is because if these cells become denatured or they lose their structure, they then create plaque. And this plaque could build up in the arteries, which we're well aware of, but it can also build up in the brain. And there's a particular protein called amyloid beta 42, which has been thoroughly studied and is one of the contributing factors to Alzheimer's. So the buildup of amyloid beta 42 actually leads to Alzheimer's. And so sauna usage, sauna usage has been shown to reduce the kind of denaturing of these proteins that then lead to plaque um, or plaque buildup in the brain. Whew! All right. So uh, I hope you got a lot out of this video. If so, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Um, so this was a video that I had a lot of fun making because there's a lot of comments in my review video of the higher dose sauna blanket. So I wanted to address some of those questions. If you're interested in learning how to use sauna as modality in conjunction with 
cold showers, with supplements, with diet, with exercise, and much more. Go ahead and check out this video here, which is all about sauna FAQs, and it's really the nitty gritty about how to use sauna effectively and with intention based off of your body type and whatever your wellness goals are. If you wanna continue connecting, which I would encourage, go ahead and book a discovery call with me, and you can also sign up for a quarterly Functional Medicine Liberty Talks, um, during which you can definitely use your sauna. And if you're interested in mind-body healing, specifically for brain fog, chronic fatigue, and burnout, go ahead and check out my course, which is really focused on these three conditions. And basically within a few days, you're gonna be able to create your own personalized protocol, use at-home labs, and really kind of basically get the experience of working with a naturopathic practitioner or a functional medicine doctor for a fraction of the cost and you'll be able to hit the ground running right away. Um, so go ahead and check that out and feel free to leave any questions below. But in the meantime, may you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you move through this life with ease. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.